All right, well, um, so this is a, a general problem with two-dimensional motion, which you might see on the exam. However, there's a very important special case, which you're even more likely to see, which is two-dimensional projectile motion. So we should do at least one problem like that. What's the difference between projectile motion and what we did here? Well, projectile motion is when the object is only under the influence of gravity. Projectile motion is a problem where the object is only under the influence of gravity. Notice that in this problem, we weren't taking into account gravity. What, where was the acceleration coming from here? From the wind. Well, you might see a problem like this, and you'll need these skills as the class goes on, uh, but you're even more likely to see projectile motion where you're only under the influence of gravity. One point that means is that we'll be ignoring air resistance, because that would be in addition to gravity. In many cases, that's a fair approximation. So we're just going to focus on gravity and not air resistance. Another name for that type of problem is free fall. Free fall is basically the same as projectile motion. Free fall means that you're moving only under the influence of gravity. And free fall can sometimes be used a little bit weirdly. Even when the object is rising, we might say that it's in free fall if it's only under the influence of gravity. So what do we need to know about free fall and projectile motion? Well, again, you would write down your five different variables here. Now, we're only under the influence of gravity. Does, um, gravity is a force. You guys have already started learning about force. Um, does the force tell you, does the force at any instant tell you your velocity or your acceleration? Your acceleration. Yeah, not your velocity. That's one of the biggest mistakes that people made historically in physics. Uh, before um, Galileo and Newton, people thought that forces caused velocity. But the force at any instant does not cause the velocity at that instant, it causes the acceleration. We'll, we'll talk about that more as we go on. So what do we know about gravity? Well, what direction is the force of gravity in? Down. Right, very simple, it's down. Straight down. So what should be a sub x? What is the horizontal acceleration due to gravity? Zero. That's a good answer. Good. There is no horizontal component of the gravitational force. Force is straight down. That means that the x component of this force is zero. Gravity is straight down, so it has no x component. So its x component is zero. Well, since there's no x force, there's no x acceleration. Forces cause accelerations, so if there's no force, there's no acceleration. And if there's no x component of the force, there's no x component of the acceleration. Now in real life, when an object is moving through the air, there is some x acceleration because you're slowing down from air resistance. But we're going to be approximating and not paying attention to that. So if there were no air resistance, the x component would literally be zero. And that's what we'll be doing in our problems. Now, how about the y component due to gravity? Well, that's a number you probably just had to memorize while you were working through the, uh, the problems. 9.8. Yeah. The acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth is 9.8. What, what's the symbol for that? Remember, that symbol is G. A lot of students have a really bad habit, and when they see G, they read that as gravity. Um, but you have to be more specific. This is the acceleration due to gravity. So let's not call this gravity. Let's call this the acceleration due to gravity. Of course, on different planets, there would be a different acceleration due to gravity. But almost all the problems we'll be seeing are on the Earth. And here's the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth. What direction is that acceleration in? Down. Down. Because the force is down. Since the acceleration is coming from the force, it should be down. So is it positive or negative? Well, that depends on what you chose as your positive direction. On most problems, you'll probably pick up as positive, and then this would be negative. And a very common student mistake is to leave out this sign. However, sometimes it's really a lot more convenient to choose down as the positive direction, and then this would be positive. So I'm not going to say that the acceleration is positive or negative. I'm just going to say it's down. And what, what the sign is depends on your axis. By the way, um, you, you've probably seen this symbol in the textbook. They write this as an italic G. 
Well, when they write the italic G, they just mean the magnitude of the acceleration. So if you see a formula that has italic G in the textbook, they don't mean negative 9.8. They just mean the magnitude, which is 9.8. So if I was writing the textbook, I would actually write it like this. I would put a dot so that I would know that it's just a magnitude. Um, but they use this symbol, um, and they just expect us to know that there's no, uh, there's no sign. That's just the convention, if you just see an italics G in, in a formula. So um, let's suppose that uh, we're <coughs> dropping uh, two <coughs> objects from the same height. Uh, so let's say we're dropping two objects from the same height. Uh, maybe we're dropping a 15-pound bowling ball and a 30-pound bowling ball. Which of those is going to hit the ground first if there's no air resistance? Yeah, good. That was a trick question. They'll both hit at the same time. Because what, what will be the acceleration of the 15-pound ball? 9.8. And what will be the acceleration of the 30-pound ball? 9.8. So this is another thing that uh, historically people screwed up for a very long time. People assumed, Aristotle assumed, for example, that heavier things fall faster. It seems perfectly logical to think that heavier things fall faster, um, but they don't. Everything has the same acceleration due to gravity, at least if air resistance is negligible. So what, what confused Aristotle is he was just thinking about things maybe that were really light. If you drop something that's really light, well, it falls a lot slower than something that's heavier because there's so much air resistance. But once you're fairly heavy, both of these are going to have almost negligible air resistance. These are both heavy enough that the air resistance will be pretty <coughs> negligible for both of these. So these really will hit the ground at almost the same time. As long as they're big enough that air resistance doesn't matter, they, they hit at pretty much the same time. OK, so for all of these projectile motion problems, first thing we do is write down these five variables. And then we put a 0 here and a 9.8 here. That's not going to be given to us in the problem. We're expected to know that if it's a projectile motion problem. So we've got to put those numbers there. That means we have a head start. We already know one of these numbers at the beginning. Now remember that we've actually seen there's two different types of kinematics problems. Um, and there's two different approaches to kinematics. There's, um, there's problems where you have a zero acceleration and a non-zero acceleration. This is kind of the normal case where we have a non-zero acceleration. So how do we do this? By using the five kinematics variables like we did in the previous problem. But how do we do this type of problem? What equation do we use here? Right. Remember we talked about how there's a whole different method when the acceleration is zero. We don't need all those five kinematics equations. We just need distance equals rate times time in this case. Anytime you're doing projectile motion, the x component is very simple. The only equation you need for the x component is this. This messes a lot of students up because they try to use the fancy kinematics approach for the horizontal component too. And that doesn't work very well. So we just want to use this simple approach. So this is why we had to talk about this before. Um, this is actually, uh, the case where you have zero acceleration is actually very important because it occurs on every projectile motion problem. Now, um, what's the relationship here between V initial x and V final x? Subtraction final minus. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going for something kind of simpler. Um, in projectile motion, what's the relationship between V initial x and V final x, the horizontal velocity? They're the same. Yeah. There's no point even having these separate variables, right? Because what does it mean if the acceleration is zero? It means the velocity is constant. So I didn't bother saying initial or final over here, because there is only one velocity. In fact, this was all kind of a red herring here. We're not even going to bother writing these five variables. Actually, I said before that we would write these, but I, I shouldn't have said that. Um, now, now we can see we don't need these five variables for the horizontal. For the horizontal, we should just go straight to this equation. So anytime you're doing a projectile motion problem, don't even worry about those five variables. Don't even worry about saying the acceleration is zero in the x component. We already know that. Just say this is the equation that we'll need here. Once we know two of these variables, we're home free, and we can figure out the third. So we're going to deal with the x component and the y component very differently here. What do we know about the velocity of the, well, first of all, what does the object's path look like in projectile motion? Yeah, so you're expected to know that in projectile motion, objects have parabolic paths. What do we know about the velocity at the peak of the path? Zero. Zero. No acceleration. Well, horizontal no, velocity is the same. Oh, it's always 
but vertical velocity is zero. There, very good. So now you're thinking in terms of components. That's good. Um, I think we talked previously about the idea that when you're changing direction, your velocity is zero. In the instant that you change direction, your velocity is zero. Well, at the peak, we're changing direction from moving up to moving down, but we're only changing our vertical direction. We're not changing our horizontal direction. In this particular case, we're moving to the right all along. So we're not saying that the horizontal velocity is here is zero, just the vertical velocity. So here we would say, at the peak, your vertical velocity is zero. This is another piece of hidden information that oftentimes students forget. If you're trying to figure out something about the peak of the path, you know that the vertical velocity is zero. And what's the horizontal velocity? Well, it's the same as the, what it was at the start. Remember, the horizontal velocity is not changing. The horizontal velocity stays the same throughout since we're ignoring air resistance. It's only the vertical velocity here that's changing. So the vertical velocity at the peak is zero. That's a very important idea to keep in mind. <coughs> 